Professor of Medicine, Department of Stem Cell Transplantation and Serial Therapy, Division of Cancer Medicine, University of Texas, MD Anderson Cancer Center. He will talk about changing landscape of myeloma therapy, focus on cell therapy. Dr. Chevlin, please. Yes. Well, thanks very much. It's a pleasure to be here for, uh, to discuss this uh, issue. You know, the su success of the CD19-directed uh, CAR T-cells for lymphomas has really energized a, a new uh, field, even a, maybe a new modality of treatment uh, of cancer. And there is uh, enormous uh, enthusiasm that this may apply to other uh, diseases, particularly hematologic malignancies, uh, such as multiple myeloma, another B-cell uh, malignancy, that this could be potentially very successful. The, uh, the chimeric antigen receptors can redirect specificity of T-cells away from their native antigen now to the, the, the target antigen of the tumor and can be a specific uh, immunotherapy against those diseases. And hopefully myeloma would be a, a successful target for such an approach. So you're all aware of the uh, CAR T-cell idea. You take a, the monoclonal antibody uh, antigen binding domain and you link this to a T-cell receptor that then mediates the uh, T-cell uh, activation signal to the T-cell to kill uh, whatever cell that, that you have, have bound with the antibody. And there are first-generation uh, uh, CAR T-cells that just had uh, this native construct, and then second and third-generation uh, CAR T-cells where you've added a co-stimulatory molecule such as CD28 or CD137. Uh, or combinations of the, of the two. And that uh, these uh, second generation CAR T cells are, where, are being currently studied in, in the fields of lymphoma. So the, uh, the high rates of responses that we've seen in uh, particularly ALL has, uh, has led to enthusiasm for this approach, but we also have to note that this is uh, not at the price of it, it, or rather that it comes at the price of some substantial toxicities where there is a high rate of cytokine release syndrome and neurotoxicity seen with the CD19 specific uh, CAR T cells and we have to be concerned that we're going to see that, that type of toxicity, um, potentially not the CNS disease but the cytokine syndrome uh, with other CAR T cell approaches in different diseases. Now, one of the other uh, things is uh, that in successful patients with the CD19 CARs, you ablate all, T all B cells, uh, the normal B cells as well as the malignant ones. And in this case, we can accept uh, living without B cells with the intravenous immune globulin. But as we think of other diseases, uh, we can't uh, eradicate the normal uh, counterpart for, for many malignancies. But in myeloma, it would be much like uh, B cell lymphomas. We could live without, uh, again, uh, the normal plasma cells. And again, suggesting that this might be a viable strategy for, uh, for treating myeloma. Now, what would be the uh, target antigen that we could uh, go after? Well, we need a target antigen that's present on the clonogenic malignant cells that are capable of sustaining the disease. So if we eradicate those diseases, hopefully we would, we would cure the patients. And again, we need to retain critical normal cells that I just discussed. And, uh, and there are a number of candidate antigens now for myeloma that we might uh, consider. We might even consider CD19. Um, it's not present on plasma cells, but it might be expressed on myeloma stem cells, and I'll come back to that. So uh, Dr. Manasanch just talked about monoclonal antibodies that have been developed that can, can um, react against uh, cells from myeloma. So indeed, we have the, the working parts, if you will, to create a CAR T cell by taking the antigen binding domain of, of, of some of these antibodies and using them to construct a CAR. And in fact, this has been done for a variety of, of potential targets. And uh, we'll discuss the BCMA uh, approach that uh, Dr. Madison briefly uh, discussed. But one could also uh, target CD38, CD138, and CS1. NY uh, ESO1 has also been targeted, as has uh, the capital light chain and, and CD19. And so all these, these uh, uh, targets are being addressed in, in uh, different clinical trials uh, currently around the world, most still in a very early stage of, uh, of development and, and conduct. So the, uh, the, the one question in myeloma is, 
if, if we eradicate the plasma cells, will we also eradicate the, the myeloma stem cells? So there is debate on the relevant role of such cells. Are there memory uh, B cells uh, that are CD19 positive but negative for the mature plasma cell markers that might also be important to eradicate? And um, uh, will this limit the use of, uh, of targeted therapies that target only, only plasma cells? So this is still an open issue, but there are uh, some uh, studies that would suggest that this might be relevant. Now, there's one interesting one um, from uh, uh, Carl June's group uh, that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, where there was a, a patient who had uh, myeloma that was resistant uh, to standard treatments and didn't respond even to an autologous stem cell transplant, but the patient got a second transplant uh, with melphalan 140 uh, milligrams per meter squared, and then the CD19 directed CAR T cell, and that patient uh, achieved a, a durable complete remission. Now, this is uh, one patient and not necessarily going to be uh, uh, characteristic of uh, all other patients with, with myeloma, but it did suggest in this situation that eradication of this potential myeloma stem cell compartment might, in fact, uh, allow, uh, you know, oh, allow one to achieve a durable remission if it's in combination with other treatments that could eradicate the mature uh, plasma cell-related uh, disease. Well, the, the biggest experience so far has been with the BCMA-directed uh, CAR T cells. It's a B-cell maturation antigen. And this was uh, uh, presented by uh, uh, um, Abbas Ali and, and Jim Korkendorfer. Uh, and it's, it's been published in, in blood and presented at the last uh, ASH meeting. And in that study, he showed that there was a dose-dependent activity of these CAR T cells against myeloma. Uh, but you required higher doses to begin to see the response. And there was only one, uh, one of 12 patients that had a, a, a dramatic remission, a stringent CR, and one other patient with a, a partial response. Now, they also noted that toxicity occurred, particularly the cytokine release syndrome, and that responding patients uh, generally did have uh, fever or, uh, or other symptoms related to that. But it can, uh, in the one patient had a, a very dramatic response. Here's the patient with uh, multiple uh, areas of skeletal disease before and two weeks after treatment, uh, showing a very rapid clearance uh, of the myeloma in, in this patient in a, in a drop of their, of their pair of protein. So clearly there is uh, promise, there's activity here. Uh, one will need to see in larger studies uh, just how, uh, how prevalent that activity will, will be and, uh, and whether this will really will emerge as a, a viable treatment. This is the same patient where you can show their, their disease present before treatment uh, was eradicated uh, when in studies afterwards. And again, the patient has achieved a, a complete remission. They saw that uh, the level of CAR T cells that was achieved in the blood was associated with the response. This is generally true with in lymphoma as well. You need to have the cells be present. They need to uh, survive for a long duration to be able to mediate their, their therapeutic effects. This uh, slide's hard, hard to see, but shows you the dose response that they started with a low dose, three times 10 to the sixth uh, cells, uh, T cells per kilogram. Didn't see any responses up until the point when, where they uh, got up to uh, 9 times 10 to the 6. So 0 0.3 was the starting dose, and so, so uh, uh, a one and a half log uh, greater number was uh, required to see uh, responses in those patients. And again, you see more toxicity with the higher, higher level of responses. There have been other studies now looking at other, other targets, NYSO, EO, e, NY, ESO-1, uh, specific uh, TCRs, uh, have been studied. And here they were given in the context of an autologous transplant. And this is where we also have, been, have encouraging, at least, concepts that we may be to eradicate the minimal residual disease that uh, causes relapse of the, of the patients. So the patients got their stem cells collected, got their standard autologous transplant with melphalan and the stem cell infusion. And then the NYESO-1 uh, uh, T cells were given uh, immediately afterward during the period of time of, of lymphodepletion. The high-dose therapy again eradicates uh, the lymphocytes. Uh, cytokines are upregulated that then lead to expansion of the uh, engineered T cells and allowing them to hopefully mediate their beneficial effects. And they saw a need in these patients 
that they had uh, prolonged remissions. Again, this uh, certainly needs to undergo more, more definitive uh, testing in a, a controlled setting. So the, uh, uh, the, the next area I wanted to get into is, is NK cells. We talked about this briefly yesterday in uh, the context of myeloid leukemias, but NK cells are also effective for, for multiple myeloma, and uh, myeloma cell lines are appear uh, very susceptible to NK cell-mediated cytotoxicity. Infusion of NK cells into murine models of myeloma can prolong their survival, and, uh, and we can see that in a dose-dependent fashion. And uh, we've developed a system at MD Anderson for ex vivo expansion of NK cells that can kill the myeloma and murine models, and now we've taken those into human clinical trials. And this is actually the work of, of Nina Shah, uh, who uh, developed the expansion system, as well as, as uh, conducted these trials. So here you can see the, the pictures. Here's the uh, control mice that have, uh, have progressive myeloma, and you can see that that um, myeloma is suppressed and, and delayed in its growth by the infusion of uh, human uh, natural killer cells. So the rationale of uh, NK cells um, that, that we're using is that we, we can use our cord blood bank to identify HLA-compatible uh, uh, NK cells that actually have cure, cure lag, and mismatch to mediate uh, maximal NK cell cytotoxicity. Uh, those human NK cells uh, do not mediate graft-versus-host disease, so we can give allogeneic NK cells uh, to patients with myeloma and uh, hopefully mediate an anti-tumor effect, and that we can use these as an off-the-shelf source of NK cells um, that could be used for, for patients uh, as they present. We don't need to collect the patient's own auto autologous cells and manipulate them as one has to do with, with CAR T cells. We can have these cells uh, ready and immediately available for therapeutic use. So the cord blood bank provides us with an enormous resource here where we can select uh, cells that are genetically optimal for each patient. We can use our ex vivo expansion system to expand them 10,000-fold uh, and then uh, give those cells therapeutically. So the system involves uh, co-cultivation of, of the cord blood cells with an antigen-presenting cell line that has all the co-stimulatory molecules and interleukin-21 that then leads to uh, a dramatic expansion of the NK cells, again, a four-log order expansion, allowing us to give up to 1 times 10 to the eighth NK, NK cells uh, per kilogram. Again, we have uh, studied these cells uh, in preclinical models, again, showing that they retard the growth of, of myeloma and have now taken them into a, a human clinical trial led by, by Dr. Shah, where we give the, the, the patients high-dose melphalan and an autologous stem cell transplant. We also use low-dose lenalidomide that has been shown to augment the cytotoxicity of NK cells. And, uh, and then we administer the cord blood NK cells right after the chemotherapy and actually before the adult, autologous transplant. So our biggest worry was when, if we give these third-party allogeneic NK cells, they may well kill the myeloma, but they could also kill, kill the transplant and cause rejection of the transplant. But fortunately, that has not been seen, and we've treated uh, approximately 40 patients now without seeing any sign of, of myelosuppression of the transplant. We've done a phase one study going all the way up to 10 to, 10 to the eighth uh, cells per kilogram. We were watching for a lot of potential NK cell mediated toxicities, but we actually have not seen uh, any uh, toxicities that we would ascribe to the NK cells. Again, we've gone uh, from five times 10 to the sixth up to 10 to the eighth uh, cells per kilogram. We've shown that the NK cell product uh, has uh, expanded uh, NK cells and activated NK cells that are uh, readily cytotoxic uh, against NK cell sensitive, and re uh, sensitive cell lines and myeloma uh, uh, cell lines, and that the NK cells mediate, um, uh, produce cytokines that are necessary for their activity, as well as directly uh, lyse the uh, myeloma cell lines and fresh myeloma cells. So again, we've seen no uh, infusional toxicities. We've had no graft-versus-host disease. Uh, we had one patient that had uh, graft failure related to a, a poor product that was collected from an outside source, and, he, and that patient was rescued with a back, backup uh, graft 
So again, in up to 40 patients now, we have not seen myelosuppression as, as a toxicity where that was our major concern. In terms of clinical outcomes of the first 12 patients, uh, we've seen uh, um, uh, that not 10 of the 12 had, had high-risk features, including some as uh, second transplants. Uh, the median follow-up time at the time of this analysis was 16 months. Uh, nine achieved a, a VGPR or better, and four became an MRD negative by flow cytometry, and uh, 11 then went on to receive maintenance therapy. So again, in a phase one study, we really can't uh, uh, assess efficacy, but uh, our, our initial response duration was encouraging, and uh, in that uh, only four of the 12 patients have had progression of disease at this point. So we're uh, encouraged to take this forward into uh, more definitive testing. One of the, the things that we wanted to be sure is that the NK cells would survive at least a meaningful period of time, and we can still see the, the NK cells uh, uh, by day 21. This is a, an example where the patient was uh, BW6 negative and the cord blood was B, W6 positive, and we can see the B, BW6 positive NK cells as late as three weeks after the transplant uh, in the peripheral blood. The cells are, are active, they, they express uh, cure and uh, activation markers of the NK cells, so uh, they, they, uh, they regenerate NK cell activity much more rapidly than the natural cord or, or autologous stem cell transplant would, and uh, hopefully then can mediate early anti-tumor effects. So our conclusions are that the cord blood is a viable source of NK cells for cell therapy. Clinically relevant cell, uh, doses can be generated now with the ex vivo expansion where we cannot get adequate NK cells from a simple apheresis from a normal donor. Here we can get uh, 100 times more by the ex vivo expansion system. Those cells are well tolerated and seem to mediate uh, important biologic effects. Now, how can we make that even better? Uh, we're going to weaponize the NK cells by adding a chimeric antigen receptor. Much like the CAR T cells, we can now make a CAR NK cell, and, and we can then uh, uh, target uh, uh, both myeloma as well as other hematological malignancies by this strategy. This is being done by Katie Rizvani. And the CAR NK cells, again, have the advantage of not causing graft-versus-host disease, and we can use our allogeneic uh, CAR NK cells as an off-the-shelf source of uh, cellular immunotherapy, and we're, uh, we're rapidly getting ready to take this into, into the clinic. So with that, I'll close. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, again, this is the work of many people within our group. Uh, Nina Shah, is, uh, this is her slide, so she's not on the list, but uh, she was an important contributor to all these studies. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> This topic is open for question and comment. Any question? The audience is exhausted. Perhaps Dr. Parmar can ask a question. Uh, great presentation, Dr. Champlin. My quick question to you is that what about the durability of response for the CAR T cells in myeloma? Because the paper that you showed, uh, the very first one from New England Journal, you know, that was after the second transplant, and the other one, I think the follow-up was also a short. So in your opinion, do you think that, they, it, especially in a disease like myeloma, which is a chronic disease, they may need multiple infusions, or what do you think would be the future? Yeah, so, uh, so that's you know, one of the issues in, with CAR T cells in general. One needs to see prolonged survival of the CAR T cell to mediate the, the, the anti-tumor effect. So one of the things with the NK cells, they, they have a naturally shorter half-life or, or survival time. They only survive a few weeks after the transplant. But if we uh, can introduce IL-15 into the NK cell, uh, and we've done this in, in, our, in the vector that we're using to create the CAR NK cells, that IL-15 will sustain those, those cells over time and would lead to their prolonged survival. So that, that's a, a component of the, of the cell that we're going to be producing for, for clinical trials. Now, what, what's the concern about that? Well, could, could those um, IL-15 responding uh, cells become uh, transformed, or could they produce other toxicities? So we're also building in a, a, a suicide gene, uh, inducible caspase-9. So this is a, a caspase-9 uh, uh, variant that is naturally inactive, but can activate it if, it, if you give a, 
uh, dimerizing drug called AP1903. It's a non-toxic agent that doesn't do anything other than uh, dimerize the, the, this inducible caspase-9. It then uh, leads to activation of the caspase-9 and, and suicide of the cell. So we modify the, the car NK cells to include this inducible caspase-9, and we can then eliminate those cells if they produce cytokine syndrome or if they produce excessive toxicity. So we think it's an important safety factor that we can build into our cell therapy. We hope it's going to eliminate the problem of the cytokine release syndrome and potentially other toxicities. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So, 